first uh, attempt to follow up on uh, Jim's question of, you know, what does the Section 78 gross up really mean? So with that, uh, first I'd like to uh, put up on the board the computation which I sent out a few days ago uh, as being at least my concept of an explanation of why the uh, why Section 78 is is there. Uh, let me say a few words and then I'll open it up to what you either understand or don't understand about this this issue. Now, you'll notice that uh, we're assuming in these two columns that X owns subsidiary Y in country B. And that as a result, we're talking about a parent subsidiary situation. The taxpayer with respect to this 18% country B tax is Y. The taxpayer is not X. Now, you may recall when we talked about this area before, we said that what we're trying to do with the deemed paid credit is to equate the answer you would get if there were a branch and not a subsidiary. So if X were operating uh, you know, as a, a branch in country B and earned 100 and country B applied its 18% tax, you would have 100 of income in country B and 18 tax in country B as we make the simplifying assumption in all these things. Uh, since the U.S. taxes on a worldwide basis, we're assuming that the actual calculation of taxable income under country B's rules and under U.S. rules is the same. In practice, it doesn't necessarily work out the same and that could create issues, but but we make the simplifying assumption that the taxable income in country B and in the United States is the same 100. So country B has imposed 18 of tax. Now when this 100 is reported, uh, the branch alternative, as 100, in the U.S. tax return, remember a, you know, X as a U.S. person is taxable on 100% of its earnings, no matter, of its net income, no matter where earned. So we have 100, uh, we have U.S. tax of 21 because the tax rate now at the corporate level is 21. We then go through the foreign tax credit routine and we say, ha ha, we ultimately get a, a, a tax credit of uh, 18 and we end up down at the bottom with three of additional U.S. tax. Now this is the branch situation. The whole purpose of the Section 78 gross up is to make sure when that same business is conducted through Y, a subsidiary, that the answer of three of additional U.S. tax is the same. Tax policy reason, again, is tax rules should not encourage a, uh, should not encourage a company to use one approach or another approach, they should make decisions on whether to use a subsidiary or a branch based on good business reasons and other legal reasons. The whole goal is that the deemed, the deemed paid mechanism has to end up with an additional three of tax. Now, when we look at the left column where I say what would be the answer if 
there were no Section 78. We would have net income of Y, 100, 18 of country B tax. But because the recognition of income in the US uh, in the US for X, the shareholder of Y, the re income recognized is not 100, it's only 82 after the application of uh, the actual, or after recognition of the taxes paid to country B. So if there's only 82 being reported as income in the tax return of X, then 21% of 82, and then granting a foreign tax credit for the deemed paid credit, ends up with something less than three. We have to get to the number three. Otherwise, we don't have a mechanism that works. And that mechanism has to get us to the same number we would have if we had a branch situation. So you see where in the second column, okay, we have the 82 of income being reported in the U.S. tax return. We add back, as the Section 78 grows up, the amount of the deemed paid credit, which is 18. That gives us 100. And then when we continue through our calculation, we get down to three of additional tax being due. This is why it's there and what it does. Now, uh, with this background and the numbers, is this uh, becoming clear as to why it's there? Or, uh, does that help, Jim? So can I restate what I think you're saying? Can you um, tell me if I got it right? <laughs> okay, go ahead. So the amount of tax paid by the CFC is deemed to be a dividend to the domestic parent corporation. Okay. Like they're getting an extra dividend. Uh, right. Right. That's it. Yeah. Now, they don't get it in cash, yeah, but they're it's just recognized as additional income, and through that mechanism, we get to the answer we need to get to. And it, I was reading the code here, so it said it relating to a foreign tax credit. So if they would have taken, the uh, instead of taking the tax credit, taken the tax deduction, does, does it not work that way then? If, uh, if they're, well, if they do not claim a foreign tax credit, right. well, first of all, for a taxpayer or a group that is filing a consolidated return, for every purpose, take the foreign tax credit, or you do not take the foreign tax credit and you take deductions for foreign taxes. Now, let's pretend that, they, that this taxpayer X did not elect the foreign tax credit. What would the income be on the recognition uh, of income in its return? Is it still the 82? Right, because the, the deduction is embedded in the 82? Yeah, the deduction is embedded in the 82, in essence. And as a result, because they're only including 82 in income, they didn't pay any tax. So 82 is the income, and uh, that's the basis for 21% of 82 in the case of no claim of foreign tax credit. So 78 gross up is only where the foreign tax credit is claimed. 